Shadow of Truth with your host, Dave Kranzler from InvestmentResearchDynamics.com and Rory Hall from TheDailyCoin.org. This is a market update for Thursday, June the 16th, 2016, and we certainly appreciate you being here. Now, I don't know if you've had a chance to listen to that interview I did with Brandon Smith from Alt Market, but uh, he listens, he's like Titus, like John Titus over at Best Evidence. He listens to what these criminals talk about and what they say, and he's more focused on the memos and the meeting minutes from the BIS and the IMF, the Bank for International Settlement and the International Monetary Fund. And he listens to and reads uh, not all the minutes like uh, Titus does, but he gets into the minutes of the Federal Reserve as well. And he was saying that there that there's never in the history that he has seen or read or heard where they have made a policy and then backed out of that policy. And they've been very adamant about having two Fed fund interest rate increases in 2016. Now, they didn't do it. Uh, on June the 15th, which means that, but Brandon seems to think that July, it may happen. And if not, then it could get really bad towards the end of the year because they, they said they were going to do one in 2015 and they did. It it was at the last minute, but they, but they made it happen. They said they were going to do it and they did it. So and that's what that's what he's basing his analysis on. I mean, would you agree with that, or do you think that? No, think that I that, wouldn't agree with that. I don't. I don't think you can go by that. First of all, in the work that Titus has done, he told me that there's no question that whatever the the Fed does, it's fed to them from their research staff. Right. They're just reading from the script the research staff puts in front of them. And he said he thinks that that is where the BIS directives get injected into the fed yes i would agree with that and so just because they wrote about in the in the meeting minutes that that they you know wanted two interest rate hike increases in 2016 i don't think they can do that because i think that the entire foundation of derivatives interest rate swaps credit default swaps everything rests on a foundation of near zero interest rates and even just a small tick up in the Fed funds rate could could set off daisy chains of counterparty default risk. Hmm. And that I think that's where the problem is. I mean, it, the monetary policy does not stimulate the economy. That, I mean, it, it, it created a bubble bounce in housing and auto sales, but that's about it. Well, and that and that's played out. I mean, as as it's what? definitely played out. I mean, yeah. we're already seeing massive defaults on auto loans. We're going to start. We're seeing default rates tick up in home equity loans, and pretty soon we're going to start seeing a lot of these zero to three percent down payment mortgages that were dumped into Fannie and Freddie Mac over the last few years. Those are going to start defaulting also. And this is all on top of the 2008 garbage that still hasn't been dealt with every bit of it. Or it was not. never dealt with. It was they never they, dealt with. Right. They, they papered it over by saying, Oh, we got Dodd, the Dodd Frank legislation and the consumer protection board or whatever they call it, you know, that consumer finance protection bureau, you know, and that's, that'll prevent these banks from doing bad things. Well, they, they never fixed the problem pr- properly the first time. That was just, window dressing that they put over the problem. Ironically, it was the taxpayers who gave the banks their capital to recreate what happened leading up to 2008, only it's worse now because 2008 was pretty much the housing market and mortgages. And now you got the housing market, mortgages, auto loans, auto market, student loans. You got all these companies out there, the peer-to-peer lending companies that are you know, they're handing out 20% personal loans to people. The, it's a similar thing as, you know, driving up to these shacks on the side of the boulevards and taking out a paycheck loan at a 20% interest rate. I mean, all this stuff's going to start defaulting, and it was all created 
because of the mon money printing by the Fed and the, and the credit creation by the Fed. So not only did they not fix the problems the first time around in 2008, they're way worse now. Yes, and that's what gold is sniffing out, as we pointed out in our, in our last uh, update, is that that's why we're seeing gold as strong as it is and silver is following right along with it. And the miners also, I mean, they're all of these things that are actually real are starting to see an uptick, whereas all of the imaginary, illusory things are failing, which they should. That's right. And that's a good point about gold, because gold's doing what it's doing in the face of incredible headwinds of 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 COMEX paper gold intervention. I mean, the open interest in gold now is shooting up through the roof. It's, it's starting to, you know, it, it's probably, I don't remember what the exact high in the gold, in the, in the COMEX gold. I could look it up, but I'm too lazy, but it was, it was, I think it peaked out around 620,000 or 630,000 contracts. And as of yesterday, we were at 554,000 contracts. Wow. So that tells you the degree to which they're printing paper gold to try and contain the price and they can't keep it below 1300 at this point. I'd like to see yeah. it hold above 1300 and then it, they could really start losing some, some control of the upside. And I think where the, where the fed is right now and the bullion banks, I think they're, they're kind of in, in what I would call a managed retreat. So yes. they're, they're feeding enough paper out there to hold down the price rise but they can't push it lower at this point. And what's remarkable about this is that India has largely been absent from the global gold market as an importer since early March. And they're still largely absent. At some point, India is going to have to wake up and feed the beast because starting at the end of August, early September, you go into their largest seasonal buying period ahead of their their major holidays and, and wedding season. And that I think at that point you could really see some fireworks in gold. And I don't think that there's, I don't really think there's going to be, you know, we've heard for the past several years in particular, you know, the summer doldrums. I don't, I don't see that happening at all. I uh, agree. Completely agree. Cause I think China's kind of sterilized the summer doldrums thing back, you know, that, that thing sort of came from the, the 2001 to 2008 period of the bull market when, when India would hibernate from, you know, in June and July, and that gave the COMEX operators free reign to push down the price of gold. And that also, now that I think about it back then, the ECB banks were still unloading up to 400 tons of gold a year. There was a thing called the Washington agreement and it was put in place. It was a, it was an agreement that enabled the, the European banks to to sell up to 400 tons of gold. Originally, it was 500 tons, and they ratcheted it down to 400 tons because they were running out of gold. They didn't want to scrap the Washington Agreement because it would have meant the obvious that they're out. They're running out of gold. <laughs> um, and and so back then, in 2001 through 2008, the, the European banks were unloading. 400 tons of gold a year into the market so they could unload it in the summer and help push down the price of gold. Well, they stopped unloading their, they stopped selling any gold, I think around 2009 or 2010. And so they've been, you know, they're, they're, that's another factor that I think that's kind of sterilized the summer doldrums thing. So I, I agree 100% with you, Rory. I think, I think, you know, we probably see a slow grind higher through July. And then when India starts to wake up again, it could get really interesting. Now, when I last spoke with uh, Bill Murphy, which has been a couple of months ago, uh, it, was, it was right after uh, the Deutsche Bank uh, manipulation situation came, came to light. And he was saying that 1850 in silver, which we're, we're under a dollar away from that number. And, it's, and he was saying that once silver breaches 1850 and holds, then we're off to the races up to like 21 or 22, maybe even higher. Uh, I can't remember because like I said, it's been a couple months ago, but I mean, would you, would you agree with that assessment? Is that what your analysis points to as well, Dave, or is it hard to say? 
You know, I kind of s- scrapped my chart reading a long time ago <laughs> when because in manipulated markets, you throw technicals out the window, right? Yeah. I mean, t- to a certain degree, the moving averages become a self-fulfilling prophecy because all the hedge funds are programmed to sell. They, they tweak their own programs and they, they're, they're programmed to sell around, you know, Fibonacci lines and moving averages and they have fancy things called pivots. But if you, I'm looking at a, a weekly chart of silver that goes back to 2010. <laughs> I haven't looked at this chart in a long, in quite a while. This chart looks unbelievably bullish, actually. The, the weekly silver chart. So, and then if, if, yeah, I mean, I can, I know why he's saying 1850. That's, you know, if you look on the chart, that was, that was kind of where the rally stalled out a year ago in May, because we had run up to over 18 and then they hammered, they hammered the metals again last summer, if you recall. Yep. So yeah, if, if that was where they stopped silver dead in its track. So yeah, if, if it can get above 1850, you know, we, we could, we could have a runaway freight train on our hands full of silver. Woohoo! <laughs> And by the way, uh, I hope your database guy doesn't scrap that Murphy interview because that was a good interview. That was a very good interview. And I'm glad you uh, mentioned that, Dave. I want to let everybody know out there listening that the site is under construction right now. And if you go to the site, you'll see that it's up and functioning. Everything works, but none of the information is being updated. And But we are working on it and everything will be back online. Should be hopefully no later than Monday. and. We certainly appreciate everybody's support. And like I said, just take a look and and you'll see that everything is still functioning. It's just going to function a whole lot better in the not too distant future. Well, Rory, you know, that's just going to make your readers even even hungrier for your site to be back up. So I hope you manage to get it up soon. Yeah, it, I'm, I'm hoping either later today. Today is Thursday, and I'm hoping either later today or tomorrow we'll we'll be back online. But surely to goodness, uh, no later than Monday. You know, the well, God's, crack, God's crack willing. Crack the on your on your tech guy, or tell him you're going <laughs> to sick Hillary Clinton on him. Sick who on him? Hillary Clinton. Oh my God, I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't do that. That's. <laughs> <laughs> uh, geez, I, I like the guy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, Dave, um, unless there's anything else, I guess that's a, as good a spot to end as any. That's all I got. I'm looking forward to next week because it's going to get interesting with the Brexit thing. Yes, it is. That's coming and, up June 23rd. And plus, we have a, a an interesting podcast coming up with Turd Ferguson next Friday. Coincidentally, maybe right after Brexit. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, well, we should have some uh, we should have some news uh, going on from that because there's a six hour there's six hours ahead of me. I'm in the Central Time Zone, so uh, if we've got him on midday, then it'll be evening by the when we're doing it. So we should have some info by that time. So everybody Looking be forward sure to it. In. Yeah. All right, and dude. I hope you get your site up. It's it's a noticeable absence in the in the alternative media community right now. Well, thank you so much. Um, well, like I said, we're doing all we can. And Dave, we'll pick this up on uh, Monday. And unless, you know, something happens over the weekend or we just feel we need to, to jump back on. But otherwise, I'll talk to you then. That sounds good, Rory. All right, buddy. Have a good one. Too.